Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, I'm Juliana and today it's the last day of the year and we are going to talk about the, well, the last book that I read in 2023 or that I finished, I mean and that is Amok by Stephen, Stephen Zweig so this is Amok and other stories because in here in my this is a portuguese edition the cover is not very nice i don't think but you know i had this book for a long time and i put it in my december month for the 12 books of 2023 the challenge but what i was saying this is a compilation of three novellas so amok the title of uh, this edition letters let me check letter from an unknown woman and the invisible the invisible collection so three novellas uh, i know that in english editions there exists this it exists an edition called amok and other stories but what I checked was that it had Amok but other stories and not these other two that I mentioned. So it's not the same thing. But you know, our novel is from Stefan Zweig, so that's what counts. I have to say that I really enjoyed this collection. I was a bit apprehensive because at, this, at first I didn't know I didn't know that this were novellas i think they are called they are uh, classified as novellas i don't know if it's short stories or novellas now i don't have i don't have that knowledge but i i'm supposing they are novellas and as you may know by now because i talked about it many times i'm not i'm finding <laughs> I'm finding this now. I'm not a type of person that really enjoys short stories or novellas, but I have to say that I really enjoy these ones. And um, I don't know, well, I'm supposing it's because of the story, because the type of writing, you know, the type of style of writing of each author. And I have to say this, that this collection was wonderful. And I was really surprised by my feelings at the end of each of, no, of each of these novellas. Oh, something that I quite enjoyed, and I'm supposing that's why they compiled these specific three novellas together in this Portuguese edition, is that, well, the first one, Amok, begins with a man that is on a ship coming back to his country so he was in the dutch in the dutch east indies he was there working i suppose and he's coming back to his country germany i think in this ship he knows a man that is kind of rec not recluse not the word but um far away from other people he's kind of in his own thing and he, be, he, be, he becomes curious about this man he goes to find him again and something funny is that the main story is what this man tells him so and then the second one letter from an unknown woman is that exactly it begins with a playboy not a playboy we don't know that at the beginning okay be begins with a man that we understand that he has means and he lives in luxury and he receives a letter a letter from he understands a woman that he doesn't know who she is the the main plot the main event is what she tells in the letter and then the last one the invisible collection begins again with a 
this time a train trip and we began to read about a man that he is in this train and it in the uh, in the carriage enters a, um, an older man that that greets our supposing main character but then this elder uh, older man begins to tell a story and that story is the main plot so it's funny how Stefan Zweig twists the dynamics of the reading experience and what we begin to think are the main characters are actually secondary <laughs> and not the main focus of the novella. So I found that very um, curious and very interesting. Well, the repetition of it, it's not boring because they are only three novellas, but it's, it's not usual, at least in my reading experience, it's not usual. I found it quite interesting. But okay, so the main uh, the first novella, Amok, as I was saying, uh, it becomes it begins in a, a ship. So we have this man telling the story a story to our supposing main character, and we find out that this that this man is a medic, is a doctor. And he was working in the Dutch East Indies as well. He was there for seven years. He begins to tell why he... Well, yes, why he is in the ship. He had some issues in... Had some issues in his country. Because he likes women who, who are difficult, who deny him who have a strong personality. Well, we get to understand that. And he refers to it as the soft spot, should we say. And he becomes, uh, he gets in trouble because of a, a woman like that in his home country. He steals money from the hospital and he's caught and then well he's fired and then a rich uncle of him of his uh, pays for the money at fault he gets to know that they are calling for doctors for the east indies and he applies to it because he received all day they gave him uh, an advancement and so he was very uh, well, that that was the point that interested him. Well, he goes there, and there uh, he gets um, a visit from a woman that he understands by the way that she was dressed, that she was rich, and she wants something from him, and he, well. He begins to, he wants her to implore him. You know <laughs> the type of person that she, he is, uh, man. But she, she doesn't do that. And so he becomes infatuated by her. Because again, she denies him. She doesn't take a vow, you know. And so he there is a tension between them and he kind of propo proposes something to her and she again denies him she laughs at him and she goes away and then there's a hurricane of emotion that takes place in this doctor and he chases her you know but that's too late and then some things happen and then it's a, success, a succession of events in a desperation from him and from her. 
so I'm not, of course, I'm not going to tell what happens and what was in question. You have to read it, but please do so because it's excellent. And you are, well, when you are reading it, you kind of guess what it's implied, but then what happens after, at least I wasn't expecting. The, his response, you know, how the, the way he behaved after, it was really kind of ridiculous almost, but that's what makes the story. So there we go. Then in Letter from an Unknown Woman, as I explained before, so this is exactly that. There is a man and he receives a letter from a stranger that we understand is a woman that was infatuated by him since her childhood. But he never knew who she was. He never knew her name. He never knew where was she from. So, you know, he didn't know he, she existed even. Although they slept together and, but he, we understand he was a playboy. So he didn't remember, you know. Then she explains why she's writing him, um, what happened to her, how was her life, the, the um, moment where they met or where they meet. Well, she is declaring herself in a way, but she has um, a justification from, for why she is specifically, specifically writing him at this moment. Again, I found the writing really beautiful, really well done. It's magnificent. But this one, I found it a bit repetitive, redundant, perhaps. So, of course, it's short because it is a novella, but I, I was... I was reading it and I, I was like, we get it, move on. But I suppose this was the conception of the author. It was his purpose um, to be this kind of repetitive and, you know, because she was, what she was saying, <laughs> it was kind of the same thing all the way through. But, you know, that's... It is what it is, but I liked it as well. Not so much as the first one, because the first one really grabbed me and it was really exciting and you wanted to read what was going to happen. I mean, you know. And the second one was not so much like that, but still was very beautiful in the end. But you know, what I said, okay. So, and the last one, The Invisible Collection. It's funny because it's like you think, well, it's a simple story. Yes, but, well, I didn't came up with it, you know. So it's funny how sometimes the simplest story is so beautiful. And this is about an antiquary. Is that how it's called? Antique dealer. With a, um, it's about an antique dealer. Again, it's a train, this time a train trip. We begin, we be, yes, we begin with um, what we suppose would be the main character. But then, then he enters an older man and he begins to tell why he was taking that trip. Or why he was in the train, should we say. Um, and this an antique dealer went to a, a poor village uh, to visit an, an old client that we know or we began to know that in fact it was a poor man but he saved money to buy paintings and drawings well-known painters and well expensive pieces and he saved to buy those pieces and have an archive of pieces that he thinks 
will be um, making a lot of money in years to come. This man is blind, so he has a passion for his archive and his collection, but he is not able to see the paintings or see the drawings. The antique dealer arrives there and he is received by his family and the, this client wants to showcase, to show him his collection and to, so he be wondered by the pieces that he has. But then he has a um, confession, he's given, this antique dealer is given a confession that disarms him and he he he's put in a sensible or sensitive situation uh, i'm not going to say what it is but the way that he ends the 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 novella it's it's really heartwarming and um yeah it's it's simple but at the same time it's very heartwarming very beautiful and i really enjoyed this one i really enjoyed this one and it's worth your time so uh, please go and read uh, if you don't have exactly well i'm supposing you won't be having as access to these three novellas in conjunction because in different countries i'm supposing there will be different um, anthologies or different collections of novellas and short stories by stefan zweig but whatever um, wherever conjunction you have i think stefan zweig is a wonderful writer and i think you will v enjoy very much his style and you know it as is novellas, you will be passing through them very quickly. And at least Amok, this one, uh, it's quite an exciting one. And Amok, you will understand what this word means, where it, where it comes from. I have uh, here posted to remember it because that the passage where the man explains what Amok means and everything will make sense. So go and read this one. I really, really enjoyed it. And well, it may made me consider <laughs> my opinion about novellas and short stories. I'm supposing it's a question of luck with the style of writing that you enjoyed the most or not. So yeah i have to give it a shot more times so i have so i can find the ones that i enjoy as anything right so well this is the 31st of 2023 the last day of the year and i wanted to pass by to wish you a happy happy new year i hope you celebrate it uh, together with your friends, with your family. Um, well, again, I said this before, but if you are working tonight, I'm hoping you, well, you can celebrate even a tiny bit, push through, you will do it, and you will have other times to celebrate other things. And of course, it's not the same thing as being free, but it's also important to make a living, right? And well, I'm wishing you a happy new year. I hope 2024 will bring success. That's what's important and that's what everyone is looking for. So I wish you a um, successful 2024 and I will see you next year. <laughs>